Matt, I got a bone to pick with you. Okay. 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 Couple couple of podcasts ago, you're talking about playing X Defiant and it was good and all that stuff. And yeah. I brought up, I was like, you know what, Matt? I think that game's gonna shut down. Rumors have been circulating saying that they're gonna shut it down. And you're like, it's not shutting down, it's really good. Why would they sponsor a stream and all this other stuff? And I was like, you know what? Matt's right. Yeah, he's he's making sense here. Why would I listen to all these rumors of the game shutting down? So I work on my my yearly free games YouTube video that I put out once a year. I saw that's that. like mm -hmm. here's the mm -hmm. best games to play. Literally, like <laughs> within five minutes of me posting that video, they announced that X Defiant was shutting down, and X Defiant is like my second game on the list of like yeah. here's some of the best free games you can play. Cause I thought about what you said, Matt, and I said, Yeah, you're right. It's not shutting down. Let's let's throw it up on my list. So uh thank you for that. Thanks for that one. So, um, you're welcome. Second of all, I would like to apologize. Apparently, my sponsored stream went so poorly that the game is now shutting down. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I was like, Matt screwed it up for everyone. I can't, like, I get, so that's the thing is, like, I think what happened is they, they're like, we need to get more people, you know, going, coming to the game, playing the game. And so they did like an, you know, an ad campaign to get people to come and join the game. And it must just not have been enough. And they're like, all right, we're cutting the cord. Or, you know, the higher ups had other things in, you know, in mm -hmm. mind. And yeah, so it's, it's getting shut down. It sucks. Shortly uh, thereafter your stream. It's like within yeah. weeks of your stream. L like Literally probably within a week. Yeah. Cause it wasn't that, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, well, I mean, that sucks. I'm not happy that X Defiant is shutting down, yeah. but also they fired, I, they fired the whole team, I think, or let them go, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, and it was like 277 people, which seems like a, a ton of people for, for the X scope Defiant. that X Defiant was like X, yeah. X Defiant has like triple A production quality visuals, but the scope of the game is like double a right it's it's really not like it's just a, multiplayer yeah yeah it's kind of classic multiplayer which is much easier to do these days than it used to be so you don't need a giant team and it we talked <clears> about this a little bit ago where um ubisoft was like talking about x defiant not doing well except that the numbers suggested it was doing pretty good but they must have just had so much overhead for that game that they're like it's not doing well and it's like X Defiant seems like it could have been made for, with way less people for way less money and maybe actually stuck around. Like if it was an indie dev project, they'd probably be overwhelmingly happy with the success and planning years and years of content. But because it's this massive Ubisoft thing with 277 people to make a relatively simple multiplayer game, it's like, yeah, what was the sustainability plan for it? Like, it, it just seems crazy to me. Well, I don't know how simple it is to develop a multiplayer game. There's probably more complexities to it. But then you see a game like The Finals, which is now, you know, it, it doesn't have like an insanely large player base. On Steam, I think it gets up to like 15,000 concurrent at like peak hours, yeah. which is, you know, reasonable. But they're like, they are they seem to be happy with that amount of people. And they've been trucking along and they're they're coming out with their season five. So it's like... Why is that game still doing reasonably well or well enough to justify adding new maps and new weapons and new, new things every single season while X Defiance like, eh, we're out within less than a year, I think. I think it's, has it been less than a year? Yeah. Oh, I, it's, yeah, I think so. Because my last year's free game list, I was talking about X Defiant, which wasn't out yet. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's been, a, it made it less than a year, which is crazy. And actually, um, what's the studio that makes the finals? I'm trying to remember their name. Embark. Uh, Embark. Um, I remember when Embark first came out or first kind of announced some of their projects that they were working on. They hadn't published anything. And I went to their website to read up on them just to like see like what what devs made up their company and stuff. But part of their whole philosophy as a studio was to optimize like efficiency and like use as many modern tools as they possibly could to speed up production pipelines make things work better and and it works in some ways yeah i know what you're going for here but also <laughs> they have a game out there that they're not shutting down true. that true. they probably made for way less resources than ubisoft did yeah 
And uh, yeah, I'm just getting at is like X Defiant wasn't a bad game. It was a cool game. And I think there was a spot for a decent free to play Call of Duty competitor, but not at whatever budget Ubisoft had picked out for that. Yeah, I agree. I think I, I still stand that X Defiant is a solid game. I, I legitimately think it is a good game. It's well made. Is there some like netcode related issues? Sure. But there's also netcode net code related issues in yeah. something like Call of Duty, right? Like COD still has and every tons of those multiplayer first person yeah. shooter. I can't think of a right. single one where I'm like the netcode's flawless. You it's know? perfect. Unless you're yeah. talking like Counter Strike, you know, 120 uh, people uh, still complain or whatever about they're called Counter Strike. You know, it's yeah, like they're they're their tick rate. Yeah. So I just think it's, yeah, they probably have just a big overhead and Call of Duty slapped this year. It did very well. People like it. Uh, it's coming out with new content, reg- you know, on the regular. And it's just it's like, well, how are you going to compete with a juggernaut when you're essentially doing the same thing? Yeah. Well, I think the important thing is, is that we accept your apology, Matt, for... Yes, I, and I apologize for either uh, ruining the game and or not being big enough to keep the game alive. Yeah, and convincing me that my rumors <laughs> were not like they're just well, rumors. They were rumor. They were rumors. That doesn't yeah. you know, so, you know, rumors that were substantiated pretty well amongst yeah, like yeah. fairly it reliable out to be channels. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I just don't like to base things off of rumors. That's all. Yeah, I know, but yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Gosh, what a bad here, content here, creator! Here, here you don't go, you don't make go. rumor based content. I apologize. All right, I accept your apology. Let's talk about Paths of Exile 2. Path of Exile 2. There's not multiple, multiple paths. Multiple paths. There's multiple Although there paths. are multiple paths you can take with the skill trees. I mean, you can go oh, all God. over the place. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, that game came out last week. $30 buy-in, but ultimately will be free to play at some point. And I personally love it. I haven't gone full end game and figured out meta and started criticizing. Well, uh low 20s N-class. i think sorceress okay yeah um i always go mage with action rpgs uh sorceress this game is like it knows what it's doing it's fully mm-hmm. diablo 2 with like the sorceress she looks like the diablo 2 sorceress you can do the ice orb spells everything's i can basically create my favorite class from diablo 2 if i want to or right especially with that customization with and skill tree yeah it's great so it speaks exactly to what i want from an action rpg and <clears> the <throat> s- aesthetics of the game are very old school action rpgs dude the so aesthetics good. are incredible yes and like in in the in the world building and everything mm-hmm. uh not to get into too many spoilers but the execution scene yeah. that happens in act one it's like <laughs> dude the voice actor killed it in that one yeah uh that's probably one of my it sounds awful when i say it out loud but that's probably yeah. one of my favorite scenes because that actress did an amazing job and just the way that it's all set up with the environmental oh it's great yeah the the environmental art and the the particle effects for like all the spells i don't know what class are you do you get a lot of spells uh, i played mercenary to 23 and now i have like a 28 warrior Oh my god. All right, you maniac. Um, yeah, I play video games for a living, so, you know, I just kind of, I play a lot. How many, how many hours into it are you now? Uh, past? 40 hours? No, no, I'm like 20 plus hours. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but a lot. But the VFX, I would imagine, for your classes are pretty impressive as well. We're just like... You do a move and like the, mm-hmm. the screen explodes and all this cool yep. stuff comes out of the ground and fire goes everywhere. Like, it just Very looks satisfying. incredible. Yeah, and the perf- I mean, my performance is fine. I don't know how it is on other systems, Same. but um yeah, it's rock solid. The, the the details like I love playing the ice um sorceress where she's like freezing guys and they're they're getting slower and colder until they completely freeze into a block of ice and then you can just shatter them and like their bits and pieces go flying everywhere and it's like yeah. happening like 15 15 enemies all in one battle that can all happen to at the same time you can freeze bosses which is dope like a lot of games yep. are which is like no nah, you can't freeze the boss because that'd be op but in this you can totally freeze the boss and then you like have a second it takes to, a long time but you can yeah which is yeah neat. it's very cool and then you can like pull off some combos and aoe stuff close range and whatever like it's it's fun the bosses too man there's 
the quantity of unique bad guys you get to fight in that is fantastic. Where you're just yeah, I went through I went because I'm on Act Two now, and yeah. the amount of unique enemies, I'm like, damn. Because I don't like to usually necessarily compare to other games and and bring down other games, but Diablo Four is obviously the biggest competitor to this right now. Yeah, and the amount of unique enemies is like staggering. Mm -hmm. You're like, it's just like, oh, now I'm fighting completely just brand new enemies that I was I wasn't just fighting in the last act. But like just another yeah. zone ago, right? Like it's just banger after banger. And then on top of that, you have all the unique bosses that have like extensive animations and yeah. spell effects and voice acting. And I'm like, God and damn, this and is they're extensive. different. Like you'll fight some vine boss that's like locked you into some small area rooted. Mm -hmm. And then like the final boss on act one is like incredible. <laughs> It's so long too, and it's just it just keeps coming at you with new attacks. Yeah. It's I died wild. quite a few times on on him. Um, As you do, yeah, I had to figure it out, and then once mm -hmm. I got it down, I was like, "All right, I got you, sucker." But like, uh, it does the thing that Diablo does, where it's like you'll find the elite version of the normal mm -hmm. bad guys, and then they have like some crazy aura that like just screws your day up. But then yep. you also have. Just a whole bunch of dudes that are like, yeah, no, this is a bespoke boss that's just in this part of a map and you'll just run into them and then yep. you got to fight them and they got voice acting and custom attacks. I, I think they said when they were making it that they had like over a hundred like unique bosses or something crazy I wouldn't like be surprised. That. Yeah. I don't, don't quote me on that, but so I, I thought think I remember something like I, that. My chat was telling me that the game's going to come out in like six months for everyone, mm -hmm. six to, months to a year. And there's going to be six acts and I'm only an act. I'm getting close to the end of act two and there's three okay. acts total. Yeah. I'm in act so two as well. If there's going to be six, like, holy hell, the game's going to be huge. That's awesome, dude. How many are in the game? How many acts are in the game right now? Three, three, three. Okay. Yeah. Dang. Act yeah. two is dope too. I love that caravan that's being pulled by the super cool, the like crazy slave dudes with the hooks in their back and stuff. Yep. Like, Oh yeah. God! Very. It's like, are we the baddie? Are yeah. we helping out the baddies? Like, actually, yeah, maybe potentially. Yeah, I didn't notice at first that they uh, that they were pulling. It's like a j massive caravan that's pulling like a a, a small town essentially. It's, a, it's, it's basically a moving city kind of. Yeah. yeah, it's or it's like a whole caravan that's just in one giant. Instead of it being a trail of caravans, it's like one mega caravan. Yep. And there's like hundreds of people pulling it, but then you look closely and you're like. Are those ropes going into hooks that are going into the flesh on their back? I found it Probably. very, very arousing. But, um, oh, oh my. Oh, oh. Uh, the art is just, I mean, God, every environment feels like super different. You're not just going yeah. through, like, here's the forest, but now it's got red vines or something on it instead of green vines. It's like totally different. And then you're in like the treetops and then you're in like, uh dungeons and you're in cave systems and you're in fields they've done a, they've done a very good job ah, it's beautiful what do you think about that skill tree man sometimes i just look at it sometimes i'm just like i i, get, hey I look at it and then i get really overwhelmed and i'm like i don't know where to go for a quote-unquote build i'm just like oh this looks like it'll help yeah. and i just make my way towards there and get those skills passives and i'm like oh this looks like it might be I, I don't have like a build. Sure. But in that's, mind. that's kind of the fun though. Right. Is like, you just yeah. kind of explore. And then though I will say respecking is a little expensive. That's what I was going to say. I hope that they, yeah. they change their policy on respecking because I bet it's you they such will. a big tree. Yeah. That I heard respecking in path of exile one is also a little bit like rough. Mm -hmm. So who knows if they're going to make it easier in path of exile too. I would like to hope so because like, that's nice kind of the fun if they of it. give you a free respec up until a certain level and at which point they're like now you got to decide you know how much do you want i don't know i i don't really see a huge in point in making it hard to experiment because i think that's right. one of the cooler things that the game does is it lets you try all this crazy stuff like i can use spells from other classes on my class which is super cool Right, you're like okay, cool. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll summon a skeleton or something like that for a sorceress. Like that's dope. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I do like the skill tree. Is so for anyone who hasn't played it yet, it's this massive, sprawling spider web of skills that Think goes. Final must, Fantasy X. Yes, and it must have like I don't know a few thousand options on there. It's I huge. would be surprised. Yeah. yeah, it's at least a thousand. It's massive. 
Um, and you can, because it's so overwhelming, you can search for keywords in it. Yep. Have you tried that? Yeah. Yep. So if you're building like for my source or something like I need better cast speed, right? I need some skills that are going to give me cast speed. You type it in and it highlights all the skills on the whole thing that have faster cast speed. And then you can just look and plan out your map on like how you want to progress your skills. It's yep. really cool. And look um, around to see if there's other other skills nearby that'd be like, okay, so I need cast speed, but I also need some other things that are for damage related. And you'll be like, okay, if I go that way, I can get cast speed and this other thing directly adjacent to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Um, it's a little divisive though in the community. You see anything I, around I, that? I've seen um, kind of the hardcore people pick, uh, nitpicking it, which I can respect. Where I don't know, I don't know specifically what divisive thing you're referring to, but I've seen people mm -hmm. sort of talking about progression, grind, balance, that type of stuff. But are you saying something else? Yeah. So one thing that a lot of people, uh, you know, roll their eyes at is when someone like a reviewer or previewer will be like it's the dark souls of this genre right mm -hmm. and this does feel actually like the dark souls of arpgs because it's way slower than path of exile one and it's significantly harder and they give you very little loot and you really feel like you are brawling your way through these dungeons to try to get to the boss and it's a much slower pace and just like dark souls you really have to learn the boss fights yeah. and to come out on top right so it's obviously not dark souls but uh, that slower gameplay is very different to Path of Exile 1. Path of Exile 1, and the reason why I don't really like a lot of ARPGs, yeah. um, is, and this isn't inherently bad, it's just that they become glorified uh, kind of cookie clicker games. Yeah, where I you agree just run with you. You run into a room and everything dies. And you're you're basically just pressing a button and then everything dies. It's like, this, That's is, this is where I fell off with the Diablo franchise was... Diablo 3 and Diablo 4, I mean, Diablo 4 brought it back a little bit, but then it kind of just still went that direction anyway, mm -hmm. where you it just becomes this spam fest of like yep. throwing thousands of enemies at you, and there's so much stuff happening on screen, you're barely even paying attention to what's triggering and procking and all that stuff, and stuff just right. starts exploding, and Yep. At that point, I don't enjoy it as much, and I, I liked Diablo 2, which, I mean, yeah, you could build some pretty fast builds in that, but um, visually, it was slow, it was easier to understand, it was slower paced, so people comparing it to Dark Souls is funny. I would say it compares more to Diablo 2 than... That's fair. Yeah, because it's like Diablo 2 is kind of the building blocks for all of this anyway, and it's like they looked at the pacing in Diablo 2 and stuck with that, and... Um, what so th the reason why there's it's a little bit divisive is that like characters especially early on like the warrior for example sucks at the beginning of the game like mm. they are just like your your attacks are so slow and the bosses hit so hard and they attack so frequently that yeah. you cannot get your attacks off Dang. and so like the only thing that you can really do is just melee use your normal melee attack which isn't really all that exciting and just like hit dodge hit dodge hit mm -hmm. like which is literally like dark souls right so yeah. um i i can understand where people are coming from i do think they're going to need to tune some of these classes and some of these bosses because there are some encounters that like as a warrior there's a trial and if you get hit you lose a resource and if that resource goes down to zero you lose the encounter but as a warrior you're literally designed the class is literally designed to get hit right yeah. like you get a ton of like armor and health regen and like that's the whole point of the class and so to have a mechanic in there a trial and one of the big things is just don't get hit but like all your attacks are super slow it's yeah it's like this doesn't this isn't this isn't working that is interesting um, yeah so how did you it's, feel it's really about the other class that you played was it a mercenary was really mercenary? fun yeah. i i, I like the mercenary i tried out ranger um and they were kind of cool too but i didn't get very far with them okay um yeah no the, the game is fun and i really like it and i play it off stream because i i just like living in this world mm -hmm. and i just so i get the complaints i think mm -hmm. they're gonna have to fine-tune these things <laughs> but i also just going back to the whole cookie clicker thing i like that i have to think about the encounters that i'm yeah. in and it's not just Oh, there's a random pack of enemies. I'll just cl click one, two, and then they're all dead, right? Yeah. I have to now actually for my warrior, I uh, prime them with a shout attack, 
I get them to a point where they get stunned or get close to stunned. Then I hit mm -hmm. my anti-stun attack that triggers it, and then they all explode. And it's nice. a little bit more nuanced. It's not, it's still like pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like super advanced, but it's a lot more thought and yeah. planning and positioning to make sure I'm not dying than most ARPGs that I've played. Yeah, in fact, I think this game is going to have a little bit of a backwards system where you need to use more skills early game. And by end game, you probably can get enough gear and things to start start honing in on just a few skills that really probably, just yeah. synergize like crazy. But yeah. yeah, similarly with my sorceress, it's like, okay, I'll put down a firewall and then I'll put it down a firewall in between me and the enemies that are coming at me. And then I'll start shooting my sparks, which when they go through the firewall, they get fire damage applied to oh, that's them. That's pretty cool. Fire and lightning. They, yeah. And then they deal double. Then I have an ice uh, aura thing that if guys get too close to me, I can freeze them and then back away. And on top of that, and then if I actually freeze them, I have all these AOE or pulsing abilities that I can plop on the ground. And every boss fight is like plopping all of those on the ground and then like running around while they deal damage to the boss and try not to die. But yep. it's way more complicated than a Diablo 2 class for the most part. Because like Diablo 2 was built around usually just like two skills mm -hmm. for most of what you did. And then you'd have a few extra ones on top of that that you cast here and there. But And this, that's what I like. Yeah. I like that I've, I've got more skills at my disposal and they it's for different situations. Yeah, I do like it. It's a little more... Con so I can understand somebody who wants that mindless just click, click, mm -hmm. click, click, click. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I appreciate this game for sort of initially taking me out of my comfort zone a little bit because I was like, oh, man, I think I have to use like three or four skills pretty regularly to like yep. speed up these fights. And then when you get used to it, you're kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm enjoying this synergy right now. I'm enjoying this vibe of like cast this and then that and then this. Oh, they surprised me from behind. So let me use, let me use this spell instead. And you just feel like especially as a sorceress. I'm using ice, fire, and lightning all together, and they all work well together, where I've never played a game that synergized all those magics so well together yeah. and made me want to use them. It usually is like about picking a path and sticking to it, and you can do that in this, but I think especially early game, it's like, no, do the everything. The flow state's a lot more interesting and engaging if yeah. you, once you get comfortable with your abilities. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love it. I think it's incredible i haven't looked into what the monetization stuff is at all i just bought the 30 dollars version and have been playing and yeah i don't know how they people, monetize people, people recommend it's so it's basically you buy cosmetics that's the big mm -hmm. thing cosmetics mm -hmm. or quality of life things for your stash is the kind of the vibe that i'm understanding okay so, so just it's like not more necessarily pay to win but you get like stuff. stash space okay which can give you you know an easier yeah. time yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That doesn't seem too aggressive. Um, no, so it seems pretty, pretty cool. reasonable. Yeah, I would imagine the stash space helps when you, if it's a shared stash among characters, then that would make sense once you're like yep. six characters in, you're like, yeah, I should probably spend a little money and like get some extra stash. Yeah. And I mean, they got to make their money. If this is coming out free to play with six yep. acts, I mean, pfft. The, the value there is insane, yeah, the, dude. Yeah, the quality is incredible for being a free-to-play game, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think, they, I think they're going to hold the ARPG title for a while. Um, yeah. It's, it's pretty dope. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, it gets a recommendation from me. Sounds like it gets a recommendation from you. It's my recommendation, you. yeah. If you're looking for a slower-paced ARPG and yeah, you want a challenge, because it's challenging, it's, yeah. it's damn fun. I like dying on the bosses, though, you know? You're just like, dang. And it's not like other action RPGs where it saves the damage you did to the boss, and then you come back, and you're like, oh, well, yeah, no, you have to start over. At half health. It's like, no, no, nope. start over. And especially that Act 1 boss, I got him into the final stage, like, three times, and the final stage is like, it just dials it up to 11, and then I would die before I could even see enough of the basically what was being thrown at me and so it just took me a little while to figure out how to deal with the final stage but 
getting to that final stage multiple times over and over. I was just like, oh, God, all right, here we go again. But yep. it makes it more rewarding once you get when to the you end. finally right? do it. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. It's fun. Um, what else did you, uh, what else did you play this week? There's a bunch of, uh, bunch of Marvel cool games. Rivals. Yeah. I, I played Marvel Rivals and it is a ton of fun. Uh, apparently mm -hmm. they got to 10 million players already and it's Dang. been less than a week. I think it's been, it's been, yeah, it just came out. So that is, I think I'm assuming for all, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, that is a success for them. Yeah, that's it's huge. It's really interesting to see. And we were talking about Marvel Snap a little bit, I think, last podcast. But um, when they take these big IPs like Marvel, they almost yeah. always get thrown onto some, not always, but often get thrown onto kind of generic games that are sort of whatever. But when they really find a genre that clicks well with them, um, you know, and then they can leverage that IP to like great effects where I haven't played a lot of Marvel Rivals, but just watching the videos on it and watching like Spider-Man or Iron Man do their cool stuff. And you're like, that looks, it just looks sick. Like it yeah. looks there's, super there's appropriate. Cool yeah. yeah. There's definitely a, it, and when you're in the moment doing those things, you're like, okay, this is just, it's just a fun game to play. Mm -hmm. there's there's a little bit of wonkiness and feedback of like when you're hitting because sometimes it just feels like you're slapping wet noodles um at players sometimes yeah. um but when you do have those really cool badass superhero supervillain moments it it feels incredible so they've they've definitely done a very good job in that respect yeah it's interesting to see just um i, I was chatting to somebody this morning actually just a uh, uh that I ran, bumped into and they were playing Marvel rivals and they're talking about it and they're saying, yeah, I, I used to love overwatch and then overwatch changed and I didn't love it as much anymore. And then this comes out and they're like, Oh man, I'm like in love with this all over again. This is yeah. great. And you're, yep. it just made me think again. I'm like, dang, blizzard dropped the ball hard on like the whole overwatch situation. You're like, I do find it a bit ironic though, because everyone complains about there being so many hero shooters. Like, oh, we don't need any more hero shooters. And then mm. a game comes out like this and it's like 10 million players. So it's like, I are think people yeah. actually tired of hero shooters or are they just... I think you just hear like, the complaints when the hero shooter genre starts to uh, move in on other genres that people are happy with, where it's like a military yeah, shooter. Yeah. And they yeah, go, yeah, I don't want my true. military shooter to become a hero shooter, so... Yeah, but I also feel like the whole hero... Sh the, the definition of hero shooter... I was having this discussion with my chat. It has ballooned to the point where basically everything is now a hero shooter. Because, mm. um, like, yeah. you, you would consider Battlefield 2042 a hero shooter, right? Sure. Yeah. You would? Okay. I is mean, like, I wouldn't Battlefield... define the genre as a hero no, yeah, shooter. Of course. But, but, yeah. but, but people complain about it being a quote-unquote hero shooter, right? Right. right. What about Battlefield 4? BF4. Class base. Yeah, class yeah. base, right? You, you call right. it class base. Yeah. But really, the difference is is what? Like it's you, style, you, you, you don't, essentially. It's sti it is style. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And so I, I don't think necessarily hero shooter is like a bad thing for these titles. Um, because if you go back to um, Battle... Would you say Battlefield 2 is a hero shooter? I mean, no. No, I'd call it like a class-based team team fps or whatever right yeah. i and i and i do agree but but why is battlefield 2 a hero not a hero shooter but battlefield 2042 is a hero shooter do you remember how many classes were in battlefield 2 i mean uh was it like five or something seven seven oh wow a yep. lot more than i they remember had special, they had like special forces they had anti-tank engineer okay. yeah if you um yeah i think so some you, of that was just, DLC, if you just named yeah. the anti-tank or engineer bob and steve and you give them a backstory and a special skins, is that all of a sudden now a hero shooter? Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Totally. Like, there's a very fine line there. It's yeah. when Bob and Steve start getting the name Bob and Steve and start going, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that fascinating? Just, just yeah. that enough just makes it, like, so different for people in yeah. their minds? Like, I think it's fascinating. I think it's very interesting, too. And... um I think it kind of goes with the style of the game, right? If you have a military shooter, you don't think about like mm -hmm. all the soldiers following some mm -hmm. caped crusader into battle. It's yeah. sort of this like everybody's equal and we're all fighting together yeah. type 
situation and you don't want to look different from the guy next to you. You want to mm-hmm. be in the same uniform and you want that. And so when you see the, the, the more specific stuff come over and especially in battlefield, which is hard game to shoehorn characters into, because when you see 20 of the same dude on the battlefield, it, looks, like, it looks super jank. Yeah. You're just like, all right, Hey Steve, Hey Steve, Hey Steve, Hey Steve. Like uh, everybody's yep. playing the assault class today. I see. Um, yep. It just looks weird. And so I, I understand the criticisms. I do think it's overblown for the most part, yeah, or at least it's not my biggest criticism. Like 2042 classes, they're cheesy and stupid, but the biggest it issues wasn't, for that game It wasn't game the was, reason why people yeah, yeah. fell off and why it sucked at launch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's a fine line. It's nuanced stuff. And I just find it fascinating that yeah. that literally is like the big difference. Cause you're right. It, it, I truly think that if you gave them names and gave them a outfit in Battlefield 2, it would essentially be a a, a hero shooter, it, 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 or at least what yeah. the equivalent of Battlefield 2042 was. I, I would also just argue that enough. Yeah. No, continue, continue. Continue. I would I would argue that hero shooters tend to rely on their bespoke abilities more so. So. Like if it, it, in like mm-hmm. a traditional hero shooter where you're Iron Man, like, okay, you've yeah. got your, your beams and your rockets and whatever. Right. And that's totally different than Spider-Man. Right. So your abilities are very different mm-hmm. where, and then you look at battlefield and it's usually like your gadget, which you're using less often than your primary weapon. So most people are using like some sort of automatic weapon as their primary and they all kind of feel like they're running together and then a tank shows up and the engineers pull out their rocket launchers and the special forces pulls out their c4 or whatever and like that kind of differentiates which is them unique a little to them. bit yeah which is unique to them but it's they're not necessarily running around completely maining entirely different types of weapons that like and different play styles yeah 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 and so yeah. i think that's a thing and i think it's more, 20... like, a, it's, it's more like you're a class and you've got like a yeah. it's like a subcategory of you. but yeah, i would yeah, argue I, I that 2042 pushed that further right where they, they did went, push a little bit further yeah here's like... squirrel suit girl mm-hmm, mm-hmm. here's guy that puts down a big armored turret here's yep. yeah so they all yep. the play style started to differentiate further and so it did feel mm-hmm. more like a hero shooter and i i think people didn't bit. resonate with that and Plus, it just didn't balance well when squirrel, yeah. squirrel Suit Girl flies over the whole army and starts shooting people in the back. You're like, I guess we don't have front lines anymore or anything. Yeah, but it's 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 just I I just find it such an interesting thing because it's it's really is just a you could even think of it just like a slight evolution of the class based system and just yeah. that slight difference is enough to be like no 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 mm-hmm. this is this is not working I don't like this so yeah I I agree but I think it's I just I love that I love the topic yeah. It is interesting. It is interesting. And uh, don't mess with people who like military games because <laughs> yeah. they style is super important to military it games, is. right? Yeah. Even Completely. even some of the Milsim stuff is too much for me, right? If I go in and play squad and they're all like hardcore following orders and stuff, sometimes I'm like, that's too much for me. I just want to run off into the forest and like hunt somebody Find down. Find some guys, get into, a, yeah. Yeah, get into engagement. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so, but that is the jam for that game. People like just like the 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 uh, order of like who's in charge who's given orders and then following those orders and kind of role playing the whole thing and i think that's a big part of it and what i'm trying to say is mil- military gamers are really just a bunch of uh big larpers you know and that's what they like true so yeah. getting back to marvel rivals yeah game slaps yeah. 33 heroes at launch i don't know how many heroes are there in overwatch that's craziness oh. man Overwatch 2 hero count. Who made Marvel Rivals? That's um that's a big old budget for 33 that, yeah. heroes. It is it is wild. Um heroes hero list. Give me the lists, Google. This is why this is why I just ask our AI overlords. Yeah, I really just need to do that. Um I'm not gonna count all these. But okay, so it looks like they probably got more than 33. Dang. Who's your favorite hero? um in oof, god i don't even know so top three it, top three i like i really like uh captain america he was brand new i think he's i think that's just because he's new and captain america is like one of my favorite superheroes especially uh the chris evans version mm-hmm. um i just i just love that america's ass um so <laughs> like that a lot 
And God, who? There's just so many options. There's so many great characters, and they're all unique and fun. I like Groot. He's a tank, and because mm -hmm. most people don't want to play as tanks, um, I can just straight up just put walls down and absorb a, ba a bajillion damage and kind of one man tank for my team, which is nice. I think he's really good for that. But yeah, I I'd have to think about it and get a list and like go through all of them because there's that many. It's kind of nuts. Yeah. Well, what's neat about them merging these IPs together or these the game style in Marvel is that you've got hundreds and hundreds of superheroes to pick from. Oh yeah. So in infinite amount. Yeah, basically infinite. So if this key, I mean, like the Deadpool variants alone, you know, you could <laughs> have twenty. Yeah. 20 versions of any hero uh because Pretty of much. how many times they've rebooted those comics um over the years there's so many variations um it's cool man i think i think this game's got some legs i hope it sticks around for a while um it is wild that we just talked about path of exiles which is basically taking taking blizzard's lunch money at right now and this game looks like it's about to take more of Blizzard's lunch money. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting. Will it, will it be able to stick around like super long term? Who knows? Like who knows? But in the, in the here and the that. now, that's yeah. I'm having fun. People are having fun. I've got friends that are like, yeah, I'm super addicted to it, and I it's like I get it. It's Sick. it's just a well made game. Yeah. Um. Now we did talk about we've Delta Force launched last last week. We talked about it a little bit. Um, uh, kind of launched with a bit. I don't know if it was because of the Marvel Rivals and Path of Exile. A little bit of a whimper of a release. Yeah, beta, well, it was um, released early access. They're kind of doing some weird naming convention, but it had mixed reviews on Steam. I don't know if it still does, but mm -hmm. um, they kind of snuck in a whole little kernel level anti cheat software thing, which people are not happy about. And I know that garnered quite a bit of. Admittedly, every like multiplayer video game has kernel level anti cheat. I think the difference between this one is that it's always on, even when you're not playing. Was my is understanding. It? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know people. Were I didn't not research happy it super this. deeply, but yeah. Okay. I don't think all all video games have kernel level, but I think um, it's your getting big ones more all, popular. All do like your okay. easy anti cheat. I think has kernel level, and that's used in like everything. Oh, interesting. Um, well, anyway, so there is a there's a bit of pushback against that, and I also think that just uh, did you like did you notice that their trailer for Delta Force uses the exact same band, and I think it's the same song from Battlefield 2042's trailer. Like it's it's is um, it really, or it's the same music group at the very least. I don't know if it's the same oh, song. That's fascinating. Yeah. So like, I mean, they just there's so much copy and paste here and there's some resentment. I feel the resentment. Like I'm definitely in the camp of this is too far. Like, mm -hmm. and then there's the other camp that's like, who cares if it's a good game, blah, 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 you know? And it's like, yeah. um, I think I side with the artists and the people who make the product more so where I'm like, it's a, even if you make a bad product, it doesn't mean somebody else gets to steal everything you just did. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't, that's not the okay to take it. Um, and so, yeah, I think some of the mixed stuff is still on the, the copy and paste stuff in there. That said, I mean, there's a decent amount of content, good amount of weapons. The gameplay has okay optimization. Some people were complaining about it, but I think it ran fine for just about everything I was doing. So, yeah, I mean, so yeah couple things the kernel level anti-cheat definitely scary i understand absolutely get why people are not okay with that um there was an issue that if you uninstalled the game it wouldn't uninstall the anti-cheat so basically it was like is Super this spyware cool. yeah because it's like do they just now have access to my pc at all times even though i uninstalled Probably. the game like that's super super like not cool um apparently they tweeted out that they've patched that and so now if you uninstall the game it also installs the anti-cheat so um there you go if at least okay. in that respect that's that's good they news. did they did patch the game like three times really quickly for a bunch of things that people were complaining about like right away yeah so, so good on them that's that's good right yeah. um and i agree that the game is competent I it, it feels kind of like Battlefield Call of Duty mixed smash together and just like the betas that I've played it was a fun experience though I'm worried about uh player burnout super fast um there's 
I think there was five maps. I think there's five maps total for the battlefield mode. Yeah. I played for six hours, seven hours, and I got four of them and only four of them. I literally never saw this mysterious fifth map. I j it just never showed yeah. up in the rotation. I'm like, uh, I'm playing the same maps over and over and over again. This is this is going to get old and I'm not the only one. I think that's going to share that same, yeah. that same idea. I also think, and maybe you can weigh in on this. Um, if you think about it a little bit is it's so damn similar to 2042 that it doesn't feel that new in terms of like some of the gameplay that's being thrown at you. So mm -hmm. it does feel like just playing a battlefield clone. A slightly and different so, version of 2042. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of said that in my review video, which is just like, they've copied it so closely that the game doesn't feel new or innovative in any way whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And even though it's completely free and it's competent, that might be enough to shoot themselves in the foot, where they're just like, we haven't done anything new or cool. Because what do you say about Delta Force to somebody else? It's uh, It's free. It's Battlefield free. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I would, I it still, has a mode. there's still people arguing, is it better than 2042? I would argue 2042 is a better game than Delta Force. Um, so okay. if you've played a lot of 2042 and you thought it was okay, I don't think Delta Force is going to evolve that experience in a meaningful way for you. Um, you may as well just go back and play more 2042. Though it is, it is still new. It's different, so it, it's, but it's, it's, it's new. <laughs> it's different in the same in the sense that the maps are not copy and paste or whatever. Right. But yeah, otherwise it just kind of feels like I, I think what it has going for it too is the Tarkov mode. If you balance between the two of them, you're going to get a lot more out of it. You're going to get a lot more content, yeah. and because there's limited maps, including in the Tarkov mode, obviously, mm -hmm. um, I think that content lasts longer because. It's much there's much more emergent gameplay happening in yeah. that style of experience. So, but if you're just if you're just there for simply Battlefield, there's fun to be had and I like there's a ton of gun weapon customization which is a blast. I like I like fine tuning things, you know, and making it my own, but they I think they're going to need to have way more at least maps in like the game when it goes officially into like 1.0 whenever that's going to happen yeah because uh, four or five or however many there are is is just simply not enough well and uh, for me it feels like they're kind of stepping in the same into the same pitfalls as 2042 did at launch in a lot of the ways where some of the especially on the um the attack and defend mode is that what mm -hmm. it's called attack and defend ad I think? yeah I think yeah it's attack um, and defend. <laughs> they like it just gets too choke pointy sometimes and there's so many abilities popping off and and some of the spots are just way too easy to defend. Um, the final objective on that cliff mat is like impossible for yeah, offense. It's yeah. like actually impossible. It's I played the 2042 beta. all over again where you're like this is the exact same thing that they screwed mm -hmm. up in 2042 and these guys copied it so closely that they just did the same thing. There was a beta where they were playing it was that final objective right attack yeah. and defense but you didn't have to go through the rest of the map it was literally just that final section i played it numerous times and not a single time did offense win it was yeah. it was just a it was just a slog yep. it was just a wall of bullets and it was yeah same was experience a snooze yep. yep but hey it is it's still it's beta right is that what it is called technically i think it's still in like beta early okay. access they're calling oh. it something yeah i don't even know what to call that stuff anymore it's like do we give them i think, a pass I think their marketing them? is is struggling in this to define what the game is yeah. right now yeah fair enough um it's out i don't personally recommend it and it's kind of political for me um because i i do mm. think it's just like stealing and i think ea is in a <laughs> bad situation where they can't do anything about it because they're they're too deep with tencent at this point and they can't uh -huh. sue so they're just like i guess we're just gonna let them blatantly copy our games and we'll see how long this goes on for i, was, uh, I wouldn't go that far but that's fine yeah fair enough agree to disagree on on this that's one completely completely fair um did you see uh, i i i keep seeing the fortnite news because I'm telling you, Matt, you're going to be playing Fortnite in another year. You're going to be a Fortnite streamer because... Oh, I do think I'll be checking out Fortnite at some yeah. point. I heard there's going to be an FPS mode. 
Yeah, so I think it's called, uh, I wrote it down in the notes, Ballistic? Yeah, Fortnite Ballistic. It's okay. It looks like Call of it looks really good. It's like a Call of Duty style shooter, but Epic is showing off that they can do anything in Fortnite, basically. It, they're showing off that, like, not only are they going to do the Roblox formula, but they're... Wait, is Ro it Counter-Strike? Is that what it is? I mean, it, it looks like a Counter-Strike map. Okay, it might be Counter-Strike style. I was trying to get the the gist on the website, and I spent five minutes looking it over. But um, it You're looks gonna have competent, ranked right? And unranked for it. Yeah. Right. What? And so that's like a Fortnite experience, and it's first person, I should say. It looks so this fantastic. Is, visually. This is kind of new. Is they're just rolling out the first person tools for Fortnite. Mm -hmm. And yep. this is sort of the project that's going to let everybody know that... It doesn't even look like Fortnite. It's no. just straight like a new game. <laughs> yeah, because it's just the Unreal Engine with all the Fortnite tools right. under the hood, and so they can they can make it look incredible. Um, like, you can use your Fortnite skins, but, like, the environment is... It's just like, this is... Okay, all right, cool. I'll yeah. try it. Yeah, so that looks like it's going to be pretty darn interesting. It's coming out soon. Um... Then there's GTA. So have you been looking at, uh, did you ever play Lego Fortnite or any of that stuff? No, I did not. Okay. That's fair enough. I mean, maybe not the right demographic for it, but I was, I think it did really well. Lego Fortnite, I think was like a huge success. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they're, they're launching Lego Fortnite brick life, I think it's called. And it's basically grand theft auto but in Lego world without the violence, you know, <laughs> without the, so not, without so the, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> without the thieving, but, um, just without looking the at grand it, and the theft and yeah. the auto. I mean, I don't know. I think Fortnite's about to like capture every market for anybody who's like under a certain age where they're just like, it's going to be Why what Fortnite game? game are you playing? It's not going to be what game are right. you playing? What pretty soon there's going to be Di a Diablo Fortnite, there's going to be a, a hero shooter Fortnite, we're getting the Counter-Strike Fortnite, we're getting the GTA Fortnite. It's all going to be there. <laughs> it's kind of insane to think about, but uh yeah, buy your I don't think Epic trades stock, but if they did I'd be buying it right now. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's neat. I if they do a FPS mode of their battle royale, I'd I'd probably try that out. I just I'm just not into the sure. third person mode at all for yeah. battle royales. Neither am I. Um PUBG. honestly I'm kind of tired yeah. of battle royales at this point. Like it's just yeah. I'd rather I'd rather play I I prefer like an extraction FPS game um instead. But even then, I'm like, I just it's too much too much tension, too too much for it's too nice much to grind to, get, to yeah. get very little at the end. Yeah. Well, it's funny because like um, I think it's it's either an age thing or it's a we've just played it so much. You watch your mouth, old yeah. man. Um. Yeah, okay. Okay, Matt. Uh, you young. You young and you. Um. It, we've played a lot of extraction shooters, and I think when I was at least when I was younger, or maybe when I was newer, that was like the flow state I wanted to be in. Like I would load up Battlefield to relax like i would just get in battlefield and just get in yeah. the flow state of just like you know hitting the shots and like far uh, yep. you know pub stomping if you will mm -hmm. uh and that was just my like chill out cool down game and it's not my relaxation game anymore it's it's i need to be more engaged than i want to be for my my new flow state you know uh -huh. now my flow state games are actually this is a good segue i was playing a game called dredge or Dredge. Oh, yeah. Dredge? Yeah. Dredge. Dredge. Yeah. Did you play Dredge? I haven't, but I've heard it's fantastic. It's a cool little indie game, and you just, yep. you're a fisherman, and you go around yep. in your little fishing boat, and... You do many games. And you fish, basically, yeah. but you also, like, kind of pull into ports, and you, like, talk to people, and you're they're like, my uncle on the island hasn't sent word back in several weeks. Can you go check on him? And then you go check on the guy, and you're like, he was okay, but, you know... You needed food. Here, there's something. like some Cthulhu, yeah. like horror to it too. The, it's a um, who's the Lovecraft, right? It's Lovecraftian, Lovecraftian style. Yeah, there's tentacles and stuff, which um, is Cthulhu, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so there's that going on. So there is actually like a story stylistically fun. Um, I kept getting recommended it because people were looking at the game that I'm working on and saying, you should play dredge. You should play dredge. And by the like fifth recommendation, I was like, all right. So I'll I do it. I downloaded it and I actually liked it a lot. Um, and the mini games are fun. It's just like chill out mini games and occasionally a big monstrous fish will attack you and then you got to run. <laughs> But you can avoid that most of the time if you're not in the mood to fight giant fish. Um, so that was, Do you actually fight them or do you just run away? You just, uh, I think you just run away. I haven't gotten far enough to know if you fight them. Maybe you get a weapon, but it's really not that kind of it's game. It's that kind of game, yeah. Yeah, you upgrade your fishing boat. Uh, you organize your fish so you catch the fish and they're all different shapes. And so you got to fit them into your fishing inventory. So you yep. can carry as many fish back to port and sell as many. Yeah. It's not like crazy insane. If you need more money, you just fish more and then you go sell the fish and then you buy the, the things you need. But um, it's fun, man. It's just chill. And you can play it on the Steam Deck. You can play it on whatever and just like get in your Zen state. Um, so that's my new Zen state game. It used to be Battlefield, but you know, whatever. I'm my brain changed, and now I. I no, no, no! Your brain stuff. didn't change. You changed. You got old, old I man. I will say, Path of Exile. I mean, I Diablo Two used to be my Zen state when I was a youngin in high school, and Path of Exile yeah. Two is very much same deal. I can just sink into that game and just zone out. It's fun. Yeah. So some things change. Maybe it. Maybe I just played so many fps over the last you know 13 years that i'm like this isn't my zen state anymore i don't know yeah i want something else i changed my brain chemistry man did you play the Probably. new indiana jones game yet? no i'm gonna play it tonight though yeah i'm yeah. gonna give it a try i hear i've heard very good things i didn't yep. want to spend a hundred dollars on an early access for an indiana, indiana jones game Just especially really one that. that's called like what the great circle or something well it's also gonna be on it's on game pass so i'm like I'm just, yeah I'm just, I'm just gonna wait cool so yeah um but i've heard very very good things that it's just a solidly made game yeah uh, apparently it like has like one for one shots from like the movies or like the movie um yeah um, yeah I'm, look I'm looking forward to trying it yeah i don't I remember the, the movies the very much though i've seen them a lot i like them a lot and i've seen the comparison shots of uh the sequences from the movie and then the same sequence in the game and it's like that's pretty darn cool that you can mm -hmm. go through the same temple area and you you're switching out the golden idol with the bag of sand and then the whole yep. thing trips and it's like okay that's that's dope like so many games have been replicating that idea for so long even diablo right you you spend plenty of time in like jungle temples and tombs and stuff where uh big boulders and booby traps trigger right they have the same mm -hmm. types of booby traps tomb raider all that stuff s takes from the original indiana jones stuff and now there's a game that's replicating the exact sequence and it's like oh uh, yeah this just is just it's just nostalgia bait but in the best kind of way you know yeah but i haven't played it it does look cool though yeah i'm looking forward to it I've heard many friends recommending it and just reviewers. The game also looks gorgeous. Yeah. Um, some people are saying that the game doesn't look good. I'm like, what? Like, it looks yeah. like a PlayStation 3 game. Like, what PlayStation 3 game had this kind of graphics? No. Like, and, and, like are, lighting and people are dum dums. Um, big, it, big, big dum dums. Yeah. Like, actually, I saw a funny post that was like, for people saying that this looks as good as like Alan Wake or whatever from like back in the day. Like, oh, the here's old one. Yeah, or, uh, like the jungle sequences which one was that three alan wake something i don't know no not uh, alan, alan wake i was gonna say alan wake is very different uh what's the one dang it. it's basically indiana jones but not um oh i know what you're talking about the uncharted series uncharted i don't know why i always get the name alan wake mixed up with okay. uncharted because they're completely different. very strange <laughs> yes it is very weird um is the guy's name alan or something i don't know nope. um <laughs> nope <laughs> yeah they don't name protagonists alan anymore like <laughs> i am alan um no so they're comparing it to uncharted graphics and somebody put the uncharted 
like jungle next to the Indiana Jones jungle. And they're like, how on earth is anybody saying that these are in the same realm? But there's also the, the lighting is incredible. Like there was mm-hmm. a, I was just, I saw a picture and it was a picture. So, but it was of, um, it's like the interior of a building and the, the lighting and the, and, and the way that it's illuminated is, is unbelievably natural. Mm-hmm. And you're like, how can you see this and be like, that's old technology. That's definitely not like cutting edge. Yeah. I, so I, you know, maybe I'll change my tune when I get my hands on it and it will suck and it will look outdated. But I, from the little that I've seen from previews, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, it's a good example of unreal engine five being used correctly. Uh, I've seen a lot of like Reddit posts and stuff bagging on UE five because oh. what's happening right now is they've made it so easy for indie devs to make really good looking, horribly optimized games. Oh yeah. And they run like trash that people are getting lots of really good looking, horribly optimized games because they use all the new tools and then they, they don't do the proper research at the start going one, do we need this tool? And two, can we optimize this tool for our purposes? They just use it and assume that it's going to work by the end of the project. And then they get to the end and they're like, Holy and crap. It doesn't. It's uh, it runs, it's, it runs yeah, horribly. <laughs> it's a performance nightmare. So yeah, Indiana Jones looks incredible and it's using all that fun UE five tech, not all of yeah. it, but some of it. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see games come out with that new uh, Mega Lights stuff, man. It's going to change. Yeah. It's going to change the rules a bit because people, uh, it's hard to know. I, I didn't understand the nuances of what was going on with like even game lighting a lot of the mm-hmm. time. And like we look at ray traced global illumination and sort of go, okay, well, it's realistic shadows and whatnot. But what we don't know is that there'll be like one or two light sources casting shadows in most scenes. And then all the other lights are not casting shadows. They're kind of like cheap lights and you can use them and they're, they kind of fill in details here and there, but Mm -hmm. there's only a few light casting sources and that's as much as you can get away with and still maintain a decent uh, frame rate or sorry, a few shadow casting sources. And, And then even those shadows have to be dialed back in terms of, their complexity and how accurate they are and what types you're using. But this new mega lights thing is like, nah, screw that. Just turn on shadows for everything and we'll just render everything super realistically. Um, Without a crazy. performance hit? There's going to be a performance hit, I guarantee it. But um, we'll just see. I'm waiting for people who make games like Indiana Jones to take the tech and go, okay, how can we actually make this work? Is this yep. feasible in a game right. environment? So that'll be pretty cool. That'll be the next the next push, right? The next, ev- I mean, it's all going to be around lighting. That's we we've got the HD textures. Mm-hmm. What matters next is the lighting to make it to make it all pop. Yep, yep. I mean, we've taken it pretty darn far with most other stuff. Lighting, and I would say like physics interactions with things and like for example creating destructible environments that's still Mm -hmm. quite a lot of work for devs and all that but one thing that i was really impressed by is uh dragon age their hair tech is insane it actually it's insane is it better than star citizen hair because they have a 30 man hair team i don't know but it looks fantastic and the hair does not clip into your armor so Ooh. like you have a, you'd have like an armor piece and it would like brush up and so my beard would actually get popped up and like the little I had like little tassels you know kind of going in Damn, dude. and th- those would get popped up and move around along the actual armor and I was like I don't know if I've seen a game do this uh, it looked a little funny because I, my you know glorious beard kept getting kind of bounced flopping around and jostled yeah. a little bit yeah you're fighting and it's flopping all over the place <laughs> and whacking yeah, or things cut scenes yeah. but. No, they're, they're every every little aspect is is being pushed, including even small stuff like hair physics. Yeah, well, that's cool. Well, it's funny because we've had the tech for that forever, but it's really about optimizing that mm-hmm. so that it runs well. So they figured out a way to make it run well during the game. So they probably had to come up with their own system, or yeah, I don't know, because that's a lot of if you're calculating how the hair bounces off of things all the time. Yeah, that's obviously a crap load of calculations. So you have to bake it in some way. You got to reduce those calculations. So they must have come up with a pretty cool system for it. 
it's Impressive. legitimately, I think, one of the best hair look, looking games, which is such a silly thing to say. But yeah. the hair, the hair physics in that, especially in cutscenes, top tier. Like, well, it's actually nominated for its hair, uh, oh. for the best hair category for the game oh, I awards. Did, I didn't know that. That's good, good, good for them. I hope they win. <laughs> uh, I hope that's a category someday. That would be fun. Not. It won't it's be. Not. It's not. Um, I was uh, I was thinking about some of the games that are we're almost we're near in the end of 2024. We're in the last leg. Um, there's some pretty big titles coming out next year. You got any any top picks, Matt? Dude, February is so unbelievably stacked. Okay, yeah. What's February, in February? So let me games February 2025. It starts with Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, February 4th. Yeah. Okay. February 11th, Civilization 7. Yeah, that one's Assassin's been a long time Creed, making. For the 14th. The avowed, 14th Assassin's Creed? Or the yep. it comes out on the 14th? Of February. Okay. All okay. this is February. I thought you were so, saying it's the 14th Assassin's Creed game. No, 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 no. no. The, <laughs> the 14th I wouldn't Assassin's be surprised Creed. if there was that many, because there's a it lot of be. Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. Uh, they got avowed on the 18th, and then Monster Hunter on the 28th. Oh my god. I know. It's probably one of the most stacked ones I've ever seen in a long time. You're not that even going to play all wild. those games. Yeah, that's too many, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, so that's pretty exciting. Be a big month. Yeah. Man, when did... Has February always been a huge month? It for... usually will be... Yeah, February can be a pretty big month for games. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. And then, like, at some point, GTA 6 is launching uh, mm -hmm. next year. Which is funny because we know it's already going to be like the best selling game of the year, potentially reviewed as like game of the year. Yeah, it's just going to be like one of those games that surpasses anything. Um, it could also just be, yeah, you know, it could just be okay. You know, maybe they try some things, it just doesn't pan out. It's that's possible. Matimi. That's your prediction for GTA 6? Eh, it's mm. going to be all right. No, I think it's going to probably be game of the year, but. Yeah, it's you know it it could just be. Eh. I mean, sure, I, it could be. I personally um, didn't think that uh, uh -oh. Red Dead Two was my game of the year. So like, it was like, your they, game of the year. It was not my game of the year. Okay. Like they did, they did a lot of awesome things, and they 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 went a direction with it where it was slower. Like you had to literally like press a button for like literally everything. The combat was really janky for controller. At least they for me, I'm terrible at skinning controllers. for every animal. Right. So Wild. like they went they went for a much more like we want you to immerse you into this world. We really want you to slow down and I enjoyed and appreciated some of those things. But yeah. then there was other parts where I'm like I don't like the aiming in this. The actual gameplay gameplay is yeah. really clunky for me and I didn't like it. So Well, you're not al you're not alone. A lot it was easy to appreciate the game for just the incredible visuals and the production the, quality. The story was amazing too. Like the characters were so real. Yeah. But then they tried to make it work with like online and stuff and people were just like, nah, I don't, I'm done. I'm good. Right. Um, so once again, I, they're, they're capable of even you think I still GTA think, six is going to be slow. I Matt. Still it's literally think Red a Dead car Redemption 2. stealing cars. Let me finish my goddamn thought. <laughs> they made an incredible game. They had a unique vision for it and they executed it incredibly well, but it wasn't necessarily for me in some respects. And I'm saying that could potentially happen in Grand Theft Auto. Do I think it will happen? Probably not. Because we already know what Grand Theft Auto is sort of like. Because, you know, they've got the history. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's possible. You think so? Um, the trailer in which it was people twerking on top of cars driving down the freeway and alligators attacking people, um, stealing mm. cars, getting mm -hmm. involved in some sort of big mafia drug deal. Who knows what it is? Uh, situation. You think that's going to be a, a slow pace, taking the vibes? No, I'm type saying game it could versus... go a different direction with it. I, we don't, oh. we don't, we, we really don't know anything about it other than the trailer that we've seen. It's we true. don't know what the actual gameplay is. It's true. We don't know. You think Rockstar is going to be like, what if, and just like do something insane? It'll be like a farm simulator. You're taking like an offhanded comment that I made about like, you know, it may not be the best yeah. game that's ever made and the history of ever. And you're like, oh, it's going to be bad, Matimio. It's going to be terrible. Uh, I can't. I just cannot imagine worthy. a world in which GTA 6 is not 
like amazing. Like Rockstar's yeah. got weren't they making in 2022 they posted a sales figure that said they were making five hundred million dollars a year on Grand Theft Auto online. Mm -hmm. They've yeah, got no, wild. unlimited budget and they've been yeah. working on it for long time. A long time. Long time. Like, probably even before like Yeah. They were probably had like, you know, not full production, obviously, but when Red Dead was still in development, I'm sure that they had people working on systems and trying to think of like what to do with the game. So, yeah. Yeah. I wonder what the budget is for GTA 6. It's probably going to be like one of the most expensive games ever made. Yeah. Because it's going to be a huge investment and that's going to probably have a huge return. Yeah. Plus they, I mean, think about this is it's, I assume it's poised to take over GTA online, right? The whole GTA online economy. So. Mm hmm they have to make sure that it does well because that's a cash cow for them, right? They can't take any chances. It's got to successfully replace that and get the new players into it so that they can keep that cash cow going because mm -hmm. that's just too much money coming in for them to be like, take any risks with the sequel not being 100% perfect. It has to be incredible. Yeah. And it probably will be incredible. Yeah. We've never take, seen high level. It's not, we've it's never not gonna, seen it's high not. level production companies screw up on a title, Matt. So I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> yeah, that's what was kind of the it's point I was trying happened. to get to. It's like it's never like we've never seen a really big budget game ever, you know, stumble a little bit. Has it's Rockstar ever dropped the ball on a Grand Theft Auto game though? Like I think they. Uh, I mean, some of them aren't as well received. And they they did have that Grand Theft Auto remaster, but I don't think that was them that did it. And that mm. was a huge fumble. Yeah. Their yeah. their recent remasters were were not good at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Well, it'll be cool. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm very, I'm very excited. Yeah. Um you watch anything? Any good? Any good books? Any movies? Any shows? What you been up to? Um, so I watched this. It's called, it was the first, it was the most watched show called Black Dove, uh, starring, um, Kira Knightley. Is that her name? And okay, yeah. it's intriguing. It's about her, and she's a well, I don't want to get spoil it too much. It's the first episode, but it's basically she's a part of a Black Dove organization where she's like a spy, mm. and it's like, oh, that's kind of neat. And it's it starts off really gritty, and then it gets less gritty in some respects where i'm like wait a second this these the, the tonal shift is very mm. odd um because there's supposed to be these professionals and then all of a sudden they just do very unprofessional things all the time like well that's kind of realistic because people do stupid things but if they're supposed to be like the elite you know professional organization and then they're just doing all this dumb stuff it kind of takes away from that yeah. a bit so i only watched one and a half episodes i might watch more but it's starting off okay, I guess. It, yeah. It's going to be yeah. one of those shows where somebody's like, it gets amazing by episode five. You just got to get through well, to episode Well, there's six five. episodes. And I think it's a limited time series, so. Okay. Well, it's not going to be that then. Yeah. But, okay. Interesting. Uh, I'm still watching Shrinking, which I'm on the second season of, and mm. it's good, man. It's, <clears throat> it's wholesome. It's very wholesome. That was the nice. word I think I was looking for. We talking like a Ted Lasso kind of wholesome? Yeah, but it's got um I forgot the actor's name, the main guy in it, who's like um forgetting Sarah Marshall guy and Oh yeah, I know how you met about. your mother. Yeah, I forgot his name. But he's good. He's kind of like he always plays <clears throat> sort of the same guy, kind of goofy, yeah. big. Yeah. Kind of like a large beta male is sort of his character, if you will. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. <laughs> he's like a giant that could probably kick your ass, but he's also just emotionally kind of like whatever. Um, so he's entertaining. Harrison Ford's still in it. Harrison, I'm liking Harrison Ford more as the show goes on. <clears throat> but yeah, I highly recommend it. It's it's fun if um, you don't mind a show about therapy. <laughs> it's about a lot more than that but um just two dudes talking to room talking that's about their feelings sort of the central theme of it which is yeah. interesting it deals with interesting subjects like therapists are not supposed to befriend their patients or it's like considered not met it's looked down upon yeah <clears throat> but then like if you have a patient for like 20 years and you're like, okay, well, how you, like, how do you not have a relationship with them? Yeah, not yeah. only do you have a relationship, but then when they're ready to move on 
from like if they're good they've got all the tools they need in life and then they move on and then you're like well i guess we'll just never see each other again um it's interesting it, it kind of like goes through a lot of those types of things and mm -hmm. other stuff but well cool i'm gonna have to check it out yeah actually it's got a, a an actor from ted lasso in the show oh yeah i won't spoil who it is but okay. you'll recognize it at the time immediately the, yeah um so yeah that was solid and then, um, of course, the last race of F1 happened, but I can I can save that for after the old Potteroonie, Matt. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. So, also, I'm, I can't wait to get back into Path of Exile, too. Dude, I can't wait to just min-max that, that spell tree and the, uh, the skills. It's just gonna... It's, it's cool, man. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you're liking it. Yeah. No, I need to... I actually have to stop playing it so I can get work done. You know, it's like one of those games where I'm just and, like and socialize with your with your family. Yeah, actually, um, <laughs> my my daughter was sitting on my lap while I was playing a little bit, and she was like really into it. And then we got to the like the sequence. <laughs> you mentioned it; it's your favorite oh, sequence the from the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like zoomed out, and I was like, "Hey, what's that over there? Uh, what's going Whoa, on?" What yeah, is, what's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's far yeah. away. The bags of blood and things that explode, they're kind of in the if distance. They don't, if they don't know what they're looking at, then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if, if they have no context, then it's, Yeah, it's you like, know. is this appropriate or not? I don't know. Probably Hopefully not. not. Probably for a not. Child. Probably not. No. Yeah, I think about sometimes the stuff I watched when I was a kid. And I was like, wow, that was wildly inappropriate. I think I saw, like, Terminator 2 when I, I must have been, like, six or something. <laughs> yeah. And I look back on that movie and I'm like, yeah, that was violent. That was pretty violent. Yeah. Um, yeah. But cool. And still one of my favorites. Was films. cool. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Kids are pretty resilient. I'm not worried. Did she seem traumatized by it at all? No, she was cool. She was yeah. like... I'm, pre I'm pretty sure she's probably just like, eh, whatever. Cool. Yeah. Probably just looking at the pretty colors. Be like, this is cool. I'm vibing. Yeah, well, she was actually... She, I was playing a sorceress, and she was like paying attention to the dress, and then mm -hmm. she wanted me to wear things that like uh there's like the circlet you know she's like yep, put on yep. the circlet you know and i was like uh, you know basically screwing up my build for her yeah but you gotta look fresh man i know good. but she was super into it she's like oh this is sick pick up those pick up that put that on and i was like all right <laughs> so it was like a dress it up becomes like a, a dressing game yeah yeah which was fun which is a part of rpgs it is i mean she's destined to become a sims player like there's no yeah. question about it yeah um but yeah, you want to wrap up the old Potteroonie there? Uh, sure. You got yeah, something got else you want to say? I got nothing say? else. Okay, okay. No, it seemed good. hesitant. Um, thank you guys for dropping by the podcast. We appreciate you very much. If you want to support us further, check out our Patreon linked in the video description. You can watch us live like people are watching right now and join us for a post-podcast Q and A, shoot the shoot the stuff. It's YouTube. I don't want to say anything. Um, <laughs> Demonetization. I know it's super cool. Um, so yeah, we appreciate you. Otherwise, drop us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next Wednesday. And Matt's gonna give you some incredibly useful advice. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> that he was prepared for. That I was prepared for. So when you're fight, when you find yourself in a situation where you keep on struggling in Path of Exile, make sure that you uh, have the right armor for the job. Um, uh, don't don't let your armor and weapons fall behind because that honestly is probably the biggest thing struggling right now. Is it's not your it's not your passives. It's not your it's not your level necessarily. It's that your armor and gear sucks. So uh, grind that. Uh, maybe use some of the orbs to increase it from a white to a blue or bl and uh, put some more affixes on it and you're good to go. You're welcome. And that was pre-prepared for you people. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much, Matt. <laughs> Bro go wants play. life advice for an entire year, every single year, every single week. It ain't happening. It ain't go, happening. Go watch a Tony Robbins seminar and take some I ain't notes. I watching nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You go watch a Tony Robinson. I don't even know who that is. You don't know who Tony... Am, am I getting his name right? He's like the motivational speaker guy that's like seven foot tall or something. Looks Tony he's... Robbins? Yeah. What did I say? Oh, yeah. No, I've, I've, I know who he is. I don't, like, watch him. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's fair. Yeah. You don't need to give life advice. Game advice works too, and that that is solid Path of Exile game advice. You're you need to get your gear in order, or you're not going to make it. Yeah, you're going to have to backtrack. All right, guys. Thanks for dropping by the podcast. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Take care.